quite a thrill for me tonight to welcome Hall of Fame broadcaster Vin Scully, who's been announcing Dodger games now for 54 years and one of my great heroes. Well, first of all, I want to say to you and to Denny, but especially to you, that it is a thrill to be standing here talking to you because I can remember when as little Ryan Lefevre with his dad, Jim, and his mom, Jean. I mean, we go back a long ways, even if you don't remember. So I'm, I'm honored to have the opportunity uh, to visit with you. And we are joined right now by little Ryan Lefevre. How about that? That's unbelievable. That was 2003, and I, and I was thinking about that. I mean, you, you sent us that interview this morning, and, and I thought, you had a chance to interview your your hero while sitting next to another one of the great influences. I mean, I, I hear so much of Vince Scully and Denny Matthews in your broadcast style, too, and I'm just wondering what the emotions are like today, what Vince Scully meant to you. I remember when Harry Callis passed away. I was actually with you my first year here, and it moved me because it was the voice of my childhood. It's so personal. What are you thinking today? Well, I, I think more than anything, I'm just grateful that I got to hear him and that I got to know him. Uh, we lived not far from each other when I was a kid, and so we'd run into him at the grocery store or we might drive by his house and stop because he was in the front yard and, and just say hello, and he was just such a nice man. But as a kid, I wanted to play, so I was more interested in the players than I was the broadcasters. But when we went there in 03... I was so nervous to go into the booth because now I was listening to him as a professional and I just, I couldn't believe how good he was. And, you know, I, growing up in Los Angeles and having my father as a major leaguer, um, you know, it was always exciting for me to meet somebody famous, but I was never overwhelmed. But I, I was that day and I walked in there and I was fully prepared to extend my hand and say, hi, Vin, I'm Ryan Lefevre, I'm Jim's son, I'm a broadcaster for the Royals, and I just want to say hello, because I hadn't seen him in like 20 years. And he looked at me and he said, well, Ryan, after all these years, look at you. And I, I mean, he just, he let me sit down next to him in the booth and we exchanged stories. I gave him stories about the Royals that I knew were right up his alley. And he was telling me about the Dodgers. and. You know, to be honest, guys, I mean, it really changed the trajectory of my career because I think when we all get into this business, and for you, Joel, Harry Callis, for me, Vin Scully, you know, we dream of being as good as they are or as, as popular as they are or whatever. But I remember after that series thinking to myself, you know what, I'm never going to be as good as Vin Scully. I'll never be as revered as Vin Scully. But I can do that. I can be that person if someone comes into the booth or if I meet somebody in public, and I will, I will never, ever forget how he made me feel. And, Ryan, I'm curious. What is it that made him so good? I mean, he's a great storyteller. He had that voice. He made you feel like he was your uncle or your father or somebody. What was it that made him so good to you? You know, I, of all the things that he did well, I think – he felt like it was his job when he went out to Los Angeles in 1958 was just to introduce the players to the fans. There weren't a lot of statistics those days. And the players, the, the people in Los Angeles, they knew the stars, but they didn't know the rest of the roster. And I think he felt the obligation to introduce these players as people to the audience. And, and I always just marveled how he could take an extraordinary athlete and make him sound like an ordinary human being. Or he could take an ordinary play or an ordinary player and explained to you how extraordinary they were and so he was much more interested in stories than i think he was in numbers and so by the time you finished a game or a season watching the dodgers i mean you felt like you knew those players and you were pulling for them as people you know not just these mythical figures on the baseball field uh, real quick we gotta wrap it up and i was thinking about this when i was at cooperstown a couple weeks ago bob costas was talking to me about how we overuse certain words like legend but for buck o'neill it applied for vin scully it applied and like Buck O'Neill, I, I think the beauty of Vince Scully, he was a link to the past, to so much history that so many of us don't have anymore. Well, I'll put it to you this way. My high school principal texted me this morning, and he's in his 70s, and he says, I feel like I lost a parent today. Mm -hmm. So you just don't have somebody who's had a career as long as he has that has touched so many different generations. I mean, you didn't have to tell anyone about Vince Scully. I mean, you could just you could hear him on the radio. And so it's really hard to 
I think most baseball fans understand he was a big deal, but it's really hard to explain what he meant to one city unless you actually live there. Yeah, the 88 call of Gibson was iconic. The Hank Aaron call, understanding where the country was at to me, even bigger. Ryan, thanks for sharing the perspective. Truly a unique one and a special one for you that I know you'll never forget those memories. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, we'll have Ryan and Hud in just a little while. Vin Scully, the baseball world mourns the passing truly of a legend. He was 94 years old.